Let's have a look at the service brake valve or the foot valve. This is a service brake valve. When the driver wants to reduce the vehicle speed and try to stop it, he will apply pressure on this pedal and that will allow compressed air to be transferred from the reservoirs. These red lines are coming from the air reservoirs. So from the reservoirs, compressed air will be allowed to pass to the brake chambers. For example, right here we have the front brake chamber. So when foot pedal is depressed, when brake is applied, compressed air will be allowed to pass through this valve and then it will go to the front chamber. From this line it will pass and then it will go to the rear brake chamber. Now when brake is not applied, when brake is not applied, these lines the output lines, for example, this is line 21. This is an output for service brake first circuit, which is the front wheel. This is line 21. And this is line 22. This is an output from the foot valve or from the service brake valve and going to circuit number 2. Circuit number 2 is the rear brake chamber. So when brake is not applied, when the pedal is not depressed, this mechanism, the mechanism, the spring-loaded valves in here, will connect this line to the vent and also this line to the vent. And this pressurized air line will be blocked in here. But whenever the foot brake is depressed, the first stroke of the movement of the foot valve, it will isolate this line from the vent it will also isolate this line from the vent. Initially, it was connected to the vent, so every, every time the pedal is released, pressurized air will be discharged from here. But when the service brake is applied, first thing that will do, it will isolate connection between this line and the vent. Then after disconnecting this from the vent, it will open this passage and allow pressurized air to pass from the reservoir then it goes to the brake chamber. So this is the principle of operation. So every time you depress the foot pedal, every time you apply brake, compressed air from the reservoir, from this straight line, it will be allowed to pass through this line 21, for example, right here. It will then go to the front foot chamber. Then brake will be applied by the help of this linkage and the linkage adjust the slack adjusters and all those linkages will be energized. But whenever the driver let go of the pedal, this blue line, it will be connected to the vent. So the air pressure that was pre previously applying brake will be discharged to the atmosphere through the vent. That way, service brake will be released. So this is the principle of operation of the foot valve. Now the service brake, when the service brake is applied, it will also energize lines that are going to the trailer. For example, right here, if you follow the yellow line, there is a line that is coming for the trailer control valve. Right here we have a trailer control valve. The trailer control valve will be supplied with pressurized air through this green line, and it will order the trailer assembly by this coupling. When there is air pressure coming from the trailer control valve through this coupling, it will allow the emergency valve relay on the trailer and it will allow the rear trailer brake to be applied. So the idea is every time you apply the service brake, compressed air will be supplied to line 41. Line 4, four represents a control circuit. So every time service brake is applied, service brake will allow compressed air to be sent to this line, line 41. When line 41 is applied with pressure and uh, this chamber is pressurized, it will allow this line to be connected to the trailer line, allowing brake to be applied on the trailer. There is also another circuit. Right here we have line 42. Line 42 will allow second circuit of the foot brake to activate the trailer control valve. So we can activate the trailer control valve by pressurizing either line 41 or line 42. By pressurizing this line 42 and line 41, we can allow the trailer control valve, we can order the trailer control valve to
to energize the trailer valve, the trailer brake. So pressurizing, pressurizing line 41 and pressurizing line 42 will allow the trailer brake to be applied. We have two different options, line 41 and line 42. This is for emergency purposes. In case there is a defective circuit, line 41 is, if line 41 is defective, the service brake will allow the trailer to be parked by using line 42. If line 42 is defective, it will use line 41 for applying the trailer brake. So this is for emergency purposes. So every time you apply the service brake, it will also send a signal, a control signal to the trailer control valve, allowing the service brake to be applied on the trailer as well. So this is the principle of operation of the service brake. So the amount of air, the amount of pressurized air that is coming from the reserve air side and passing to the chamber side depends on how much the foot pedal is opened. If you depress it very largely, if it is depressed very much, high pressure air will be passed from the reserve air to the brake chambers. But if it is pressed lightly, only a small amount of air will be passed to the brake chambers. So this is the principle of operation of the brake valve, or sometimes known as the foot. Now let's have a look at the principle of operation of the front wheel chamber, or sometimes known as the piston cylinder. Right in here, there is a diaphragm, a diaphragm that is pushed to this side by the spring. There is a compression spring that is pushing the diaphragm to this side. And when that is pushed, the slack adjuster and all this assembly will be pulled to this side by the compression spring. But when compressed air is supplied from the foot valve, that compressed air will act on the diaphragm, compressing the compression spring and moving the entire linkage to this side. That will allow the slack adjuster to rotate and activate the S-cam inside the front wheel. That will allow the service brake to be applied. So this is the principle of operation of the front wheel chamber. We are going to have a look at the principle of operation of the combi chamber, sometimes known as a combination chamber, that is usually available on trucks rear wheel. Now the combi chamber has two chambers. The green, the, the green colored chamber is for parking brake and the blue chamber is for service brake. In the service brake, we have a diaphragm with a compression spring, and when compressed air is supplied from the service brake to this line, that compressed air will push the diaphragm and the spring to this side, pushing the slack adjuster and making the brake to be applied. So this is how the service brake is activated. But when this line is depressurized, when the service brake is released, when the foot brake is lead, when the foot brake valve is released and this line is depressurized, the compression spring in here will return the diaphragm and the push rod assembly to this side, making the frame, making the brake to be released. So this is the principle of operation. Pressurizing this chamber will apply brake. Depressurizing this chamber will release the brake. So it will be acted upon by compressed air when service brake is applied, and that will allow the push rod and the diaphragm to be moved to this side, and that will allow the brake to be applied. But when it comes to the parking brake, parking brake is basically applied by large compressed spring. There is a tough compressed spring, somewhere around 800 kilogram force of, uh, somewhere around 800 kilogram force will be exerted by this tough spring. There is tough spring. So when the, that spring is relaxed, it will push the push rod and it will apply brake. For example, right now, the entire assembly is moved to this side because the spring in here is relaxed. When air is applied in here, and if the spring is compressed to this side, that will release the parking brake. So parking brake will be applied by spring force, but parking brake will be released by compressed air. Now there is a line that is coming from the parking brake valve. If this line is pressurized, if this line, line coming from the parking brake valve, if this line is pressurized, it will introduce air pressure into this chamber and that will compress the parking brake spring to the right side. 
When the spring is pushed to this side, it will let go of the push rod, and that way the parking brake will be released. But when this chamber is depressurized, the spring force will move the entire assembly, the push rod assembly will be pushed to this side, allowing parking brake to be applied. So this oscillation will require venting of this chamber. That is vented by this pipe. This pipe is simply for venting purposes. And if you want to tow your vehicle, the parking brake has to be released. Otherwise, it is impossible for you to tow a vehicle. That can be manually disengaged by simply loosening this bolt. When you loosen this bolt, it will move the compressed spring to this side, releasing force on the push rod and releasing the brake. So this is how the combination chamber operates. We call it combination chamber because it has a parking brake and a foot brake or a service brake assembly. So this is the principle of operation of the combination chamber.